pretty chilly in the mornings here at Johnson Creek, Idaho, elevation 5,000 feet. I'm in a 2010 Husky A1C. Joe's over there in an 81 Super Mountaineer. Johnson Creek traffic, Husky 6 south of Whiskey is dog flight. Two highways departing Johnson Creek northbound over Yellow Pine. Hope you'll come with us. We're heading to Wilson Bar. One thing I've noticed flying up here in the mountains, ADSB doesn't work so well with no line of sight to ground stations. So it just makes it more important that you look and listen and communicate where you're at and what you're doing. This Wilson Bar airstrip sits down in a valley, right on the Salmon River, elevation 2250, with an east-west runway, 0624. About 1,500 feet long and 50 foot wide. I think you're going to like it. You'll see it as soon as we cross this next mountain. Well, there it is. We're coming in from the west, southwest. You can see a Wilson Bar on the left side of the river, and just uh, before it is McKay Bar, a private strip. We'll take our time descending. We plan on spiraling down into the valley over the airstrip. That'll give us a chance to study the field, check the winds, plan our approach, and look for go-around options. Dog. Wilson Bar traffic. Dog fly to two high wings circling overhead. Wilson Bar will be setting up for landing shortly. Wilson Bar traffic. Husky six out for whiskey and left downwind for landing west at Wilson Bar. I dare say most people just fly upstream, make a 180, turn around, go back and land. But this seemed like it'd be a cool way to approach. Most of our traffic, Husky 6 down for Whiskey, a mile and a half left base for landing west at Wilson Bar. Husky 6 down for Whiskey, mile and a half, final landing west, Wilson Bar. There's been four known accidents here at Wilson Bar between 04 and 09. A Cessna 180 carrying extra airspeed due to downdrafts ran off the end of the runway and flipped over. 182 did basically the same thing. Then a mall went off the right side about a third of the way down. The fourth plane, a 172, clipped a wingtip on vegetation when taken off, but was able to continue. It's interesting. For reference, field elevation is 2275, and coming around the last bend down there, you're about four-tenths to a half a mile from the runway, so maybe reference 2400 feet there, if your altimeter is even set right. To tell you the truth, after circling the field three times, we have a pretty good mental picture, so we just eyeball it and remind ourselves the threshold sits 30 to 50 feet above the river. A lot of rafters. I see them there. Of course, when we get there, if we don't like what we see, we'll just continue down the river. Because once you turn from the river to the runway, your go-around options start to diminish. Your second approach is always better, and you'll have twice the fun. Here comes the runway. Pretty good. A little lumpy, but not bad at all. Give him 
my tires, you think? I'm going to get out and walk it, but yeah, I think you'll be all fine. It's just, uh, it's kind of like rolling bumps. The rolling bumps, mean? Uh, you know, kind of like small swells and dips. They're smooth, but just enough where excessive speed may launch you back in the air. Buddy, huh? was a fun approach, even though you're coasting down grade on the approach, the runway itself is actually slightly uphill, rising about 60 feet overall, with most of that uphill as you see at the very end. A nice grassy area over here on the south side to park. I'll bet you can get four airplanes in here, no problem. We'll get out, watch Joe land. Sounds nice. That's cool. Nice. That was cool. That was cool, wasn't it? Wasn't that about the coolest, Joe? <laughs> well, of course, he's got noise canceling on. Can't. That? that was the coolest, wasn't it? Yeah, no problem. This is going to be a flaps three takeoff, though. Me and Joe been hiking through the weeds down there, and then we get up here and find <laughs> there's a road. <laughs> we could have taken the road. We'll walk down here a little bit further. I mean, look down on those rafters. There's a little better view. Like I was saying, there's a, there's several camping spots real close to each other along the river on the approach. Yeah. You can just barely see our airplanes parked way down there. Yeah, there they are. We're going to hike a little bit more. Well, we think this is the Salmon River Trail we're on. We've been hiking east on it and north for a little while. Now we're on our way back to the airplanes. Kind of excited to take back off over the river, then head over to Big Creek for a late breakfast. You don't hear for me in about five minutes, come back over and circle. Okay, I'll come back and ask the rafters where you went. There's a great view of that trail we were just on. We'll keep flying up the river here for a while and see how far the trail goes. What an amazing place. This is the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness Area. Then in the 80s, Wilson Barr was declared to be in the wild and scenic river corridor of the main Salmon River. 
and the Forest Service closed it. It's open now, but you get the impression some of these places are pretty noise sensitive to some people. Although the rafters were excitedly waving to us, I couldn't hear exactly what they were saying. Still, the state of Idaho lets us land here. Although from what I've read lately, I think the state would prefer once we land, we take some time to enjoy the area. You know, camp, hike, picnic, do something to stay for a while. Versus just landing, turning around and blasting off right away to see how many strips we can hit in a day. Anyways, nowadays me and Joe try to spend a few hours hiking before we blast off. I only say something because I feel a little guilty making a video which may draw more people to the area. So I feel I have to mention something about safety as well as etiquette. Just something to keep in mind. It's like a paradise here. I hate to see it ever closed again. Anyway, I think we're going to make it to Big Creek just in time to eat. Thanks for coming. I'll see you next time.